Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, I'm Irene and today I'll be showing you a very magical video because today I'm making a Diagon Alley out of cheap Dollar Tree doll houses. So, let's get started! I bought these houses in a local Dollar Tree shop and I got four houses with different designs. I will also leave the links for similar houses at AliExpress. First of all, you need to prime the houses. I'm laying out all the parts on the table, removing window glass and I'm going to be using a black primer for plastic. You can also use black paint with primer like Crestoleum 2-in-1 paint. I'm priming all the details from both sides to cover the original bright plastic color well. I'm waiting for the primer to dry well and then I'm begin painting. Here I'm using a dry brush technique to create color with many half tones. I'm taking a bit of paint on a stiff bristle brush and wiping the brush off so that it is almost dry. I'm using acrylic paints here. And I'm painting the houses using this brush, the grooves will remain unpainted because the brush is nearly dry and the color is not uniform, so the surface looks very realistic. Since the houses here have mostly brick surfaces, I'm using a terracotta color first. Then I'm adding a lighter terracotta color here and there with a smaller brush to make the overall look more natural, like a real brick. Well, and on some surfaces where there are pebbles, I'm using some grey paint, also in several tones, so that the overall color is varied. I'm coloring the paving stones in front of the houses grey. And in some places I'm also touching the bricks with grey a little in order to dust the bright terracotta. And finally I'm adding olive paint. I'm painting the roof of the future bookshop in olive and I'm also greening the walls a bit here and there. And I'm making a red roof for the corner house using the same technique. It's time to give some personality to the houses. I'm going to be making shops from Diagon Alley. I've searched through a lot of photos of these shops from entertainment parks and movies about Harry Potter and I've chosen four of them for my project. I didn't want to do the most popular ones, like Ollivander's shop, but I couldn't get away from one shop, this is the bookshop. I'll begin with it. This is the Flourish and Blots shop. It has green windows and to make it I'm taking the house with the largest windows and the fabric canopy over the door. It is perfect for this role. So I'm painting the entire first floor in a dark green color, as well as the windows of the second and third floors. The second shop I'll be doing is an apothecary with all sorts of potions in the window. Looking over the photos, I really liked Mr. Malpepper's apothecary, where the ingredients of poisonous potions are sold, although it is located in Nocturne Alley, not in Diagon Alley, but I hope you will forgive me this inaccuracy. The apothecary has purple windows, so here I'm painting the first floor and the windows in a lilac purple color. I'll also tint the roof in lilac a little, so as not to get out of the general concept. 
The third shop is Wisea Cruz with the DIN equipment, it has blue windows. By the way, this model of a house would be perfect for Madame Malkin's clothing shop, but I already have the house with purple windows and, as I have said, I don't want to make the most popular shops. And finally, the fourth house, which is the corner one. This will be the old post. The post office has a black sign, but I want to make it a little bit brighter, so I'm painting the door and the window in red. After painting, I'll be making signs. I found on the internet or made myself the signs for the shops and I've picked up the pictures for the backdrops of the houses. Where can you find this file? You'll know in the description box below the video. So, I'm cutting out all the signs. I have here two options for flourishing lots. You can take the one you like more. Then I'm adjusting the sign a little so that it fits into the gap for a sign over the house. And I'm attaching the sign using white glue. The apothecary has a complex shape side, so I have to adjust it. I'm laying the paper over the house and pressing it really well, so that the borders of the signboard I'm printing on the paper. And then I'm cutting out the sign. As for the old post, on the contrary, everything is really easy. I don't have to adjust anything here and I'm just gluing it on. And finally, the visiting equipment shop. Here the sign consists of three parts, just like the one over the house. I'm adjusting all the parts and gluing them into place. Now for the backdrops. I've picked more or less meaningful pictures for the backdrops of the shops. I'm cutting them out and also fitting them to suit the back walls of the shops. For the bookshop I found a picture with a lot of books. For the apothecary of course an interior with a huge apothecary cabinet and for the second floor I also have a picture of a bookshop but the color of the interior here is purple. It suits well here so why not have potion books in the apothecary? My Witherdin equipment shop gets a picture of a junk shop with many incomprehensible items and for the old post I found a picture with owls on a roost. Yeah, I almost forgot, I also have street signs here. I'm gluing them over the sides of the houses. Yeah, yeah, we'll remember that the apothecary is actually from another alley. In the end, I'm touching the corners of the houses with brown paint to edge the painted windows slightly, as if the paint has darkened here and there, and now it is looking much more like a real magic shop and not just painted plastic. Finally, I'm inserting glass into the houses. This is transparent plastic inserts, and now I can begin decorating the interiors. Traditionally, I'm beginning with a bookshop. Flourishing Blots has pink curtains on the windows, so I'm taking a piece of pink silk and cutting some kind of curtains out of it. I'm hot gluing these fabric scraps to the inside of the house. Further, to be honest, I made things more complicated than necessary. Well, you know, I couldn't do it any other way. I've really wanted to have windows filled with things, so among other pictures I've downloaded different book covers, then I've printed and cut them out. The covers are tiny, I don't know if you can read anything here, but they are real visiting books. To make the books look three-dimensional, I'm folding the cover. Best is to cut through the folds with a box knife a little, it's easier to bend it then. And then I'm hot gluing a couple of pieces of paper inside the cover. Of course, the imitation is quite rough, but it's understandable that this is a book. I'm making about a dozen different books, hot gluing two pieces of a match box into the windows as tables and placing these tiny books over them.
For the old post, I'm cutting some magic posters. They are also absolutely unreadable in this size, but let them be so. My paper is quite thick, so I'm dividing it into two layers and rolling scrolls out of them. And then I'm gluing a kind of a pile from these scrolls to make it look like they are piled on the floor in a heap. Yeah, wizards have a rather untidy post office. In the wizarding equipment shop, globes, telescopes and other measuring things should be sold, and I have collected chivalry pendants, at least somehow resembling any kind of wizarding equipment. A watch, binoculars, an elephant, I've also made a cap full of spoons and keys, and I'm hot gluing all these motley jumble into the window. And finally, the apothecary. I've probably wanted to make it must of all. Here the bronze bead caps came in handy, I'm making bowls for potion ingredients out of them. And I'm adding a couple of wooden beads, these will make great pots. First I'm filling all the caps with hot glue. Then I'm filling them with different stuff, I'm hot gluing small seed beads in some of them or a lump of moss, or somewhere I'm just painting the contents. I'm also painting all the wooden beads in black. And in several bowls I'm adding contour paint or glitter paint in different colors. So my bowls look varied and quite authentic. To place all these balls into the display window I need a rack. I've painted wooden matches in purple and then I'm making a rack. I'm hot gluing two balls over a shortened match, this is a shelf. And then I'm connecting three such shelves with two more matches on the sides. And then I'm hot gluing this impromptu ladder into the window. I'm also adding several pots over the floor from the inside. And I'm adding more pots from the outside to make it look more picturesque. After the apothecary was finished, I've decided to revive the landscape, so to speak, around other shops outside. I'm adding a broom to the wizarding equipment shop, I'm making it out of fine mesh and a match. I'm also wrapping a couple of beads in the same mesh and painting all this in black. And I'm hot gluing them near the entrance of the shop. Finally, I'm adding a small sandwich board to the bookshop and adding a bush out of moss. I also have small details of the houses left, lanterns, signs. I'm painting these little things in bronze color. Of course, it would have been better having lanterns of a more vintage form. I even have lanterns for miniatures with LED somewhere, but alas and oh, I couldn't find them. I will probably find them as soon as I've finished with these houses. And I'm painting some details over the houses in bronze too. I'm highlighting the relief around the sign here and there making bronze strips on the fabric canopy over the bookshop, and so on. I've also decided to add an old cage to the old post entrance. The best option here is again using a chivalry pendant, but I didn't have one on hand, I didn't want to order it and wait till it arrives, so I've decided to glue it myself. I'm winding six brackets over a thick rod out of thin wire.
and I'm gluing two of these brackets crosswise. I'm cutting the rest in half and gluing them into the gaps between the first ones. This is the base of the cage. I'm gluing a shapeless lump out of white fluff yarn. This is gonna be an O. I'm drawing the beak and the eyes with contour paint, though it seems to me that I'm getting an overgrown chicken instead of an owl. And I'm putting this bird over a bead cap. I'm covering the bird with the cage and hot gluing it into place. All that is left is to paint the cage in bronze. It is a bit crooked, of course, but in general it looks not so bad. The main thing here is to glue the cage facing the best side out, so that it is not that obvious that this is an overgrown chicken and not an owl. Then I'm going to bring lights into the houses. To do this I'm using small battery-powered fairy lights, so each house can be placed independently from each other. Once again I'm disassembling the houses, they have square holes on the back walls and I'm 3 d the fairy lights through one of them. I'm hot gluing the battery pack onto the back of the house. You can also glue it to the bottom, but then you'll have to cut holes for the wire and the battery pack from the bottom, so I decided to put them onto the back. I'm going to paint them back black afterwards and it will be completely invisible and I'm hot gluing the fairy light string itself inside. Here I'm trying to arrange the wires so that they are not visible from the outside through the windows. I want only the light to be visible, so I'm placing the wires around the perimeter of the first and the second floors. So it turns out that the room is lit and the wires and light bulbs themselves are not visible. All that is left is to arrange the houses somewhere on a window sill or on a bookshelf to turn on the lights and enjoy the magic. I absolutely love the outcome. I think these houses are just perfect for reproducing the atmosphere of the world of magic and wizardry. I'd also add the red Hogwarts Express here. It's a pity my local Dollar Tree doesn't sell trains this year suitable for repainting. But if they appear, I will definitely add the train to my Harry Potter collection. These houses are great for decorating for Halloween and of course you can also use them for Christmas. All you need to do is to add some artificial snow over the roofs and put tiny Christmas trees near the entrances. The shops are incredibly realistic, you'll want to look at these houses, wonder what is inside, but even if you decide to keep it more simple without decorating windows and just repainting the houses and adding new signs and backdrops, which is way easier, they look just as good. I hope you liked today's video, guys. Please let me know what you think about this project down below in the comments box. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye!